So day two at the Circuit de la Sarthe for practice for the 2021 24 Hours of Le Mans. And it was a bit more of an active day today. First up, you had Hyperpole, which sets the final qualifying lineup for anyone that was in a top six in their class yesterday uh, in qualifying. So that was, of course, its own thing. But also you had two practices surrounding that that had some interesting things happening in them. So let's go ahead and go straight into the first practice. So what happened in FP3? Uh, well, you had the Alpine uh, fastest, the number 36 Alpine uh, fastest at a 326.594. Now they put that in right at the end of the session as a qualifying lap that they must have gotten a pretty good little lap on. Uh, probably didn't have a lot of traffic or had traffic in the right places and was able to get a good lap in. Second up was the number seven Toyota. Uh, Mike Conway put in a 328.064. And third was the number eight Toyota uh, of Brendan Hartley, who put in a 328.260. Uh, now, talking about that number eight Toyota, uh, during the middle of that practice session, uh, they had actually had an incident. Uh, Kazuki Nakajima, coming into Indianapolis, had basically just locked up the rear tires and spun around. It coming, it was it was at the last part of Indianapolis, the slower left hand turn. So there wasn't any major danger, but he just kind of backed it into the wall, and they had some damage to the rear wing that they had to come in and probably replace the rear end. So interesting crash for Nakajima. So that's the first Toyota crash in, I think it's been a while since there's been a Toyota crash. Um, yeah, so fourth up in the hypercar division, you have fourth overall, the number 708 Glickenhaus, uh, to 328.728, so about half a second behind the slowest Toyota. Now, looking into that 708 versus their teammate, sister car 709, uh, the 708 has been significantly, not maybe not significantly, but noticeably faster throughout this whole, throughout the last two days. And even in testing earlier this week, they were faster. Um, it seems the 708 team has been able to lock on quicker. Um, obviously, they've got Pippo Durrani. Uh, Olivier Pla and, and Frank Maliou is their third driver, who I don't know who that is, but I know who the other two guys are. Um, so yeah, they, they've got some pretty good drivers in their lineup, and uh, it seems that they have been able to latch on to Le Mans quicker than their sister car, 709, who has three races, or this will be their third race. Um, and at least in terms of Monza, the 709 was much quicker than the 708, so it's interesting to see if the 708 is able to almost keep up with the other hypercars. I mean, they're behind still, but like not by a ton. So that's interesting to see from the Glickenhaus team. Uh, looking into the LMP2 division, you've got the Jota Sport number 38 fastest today with Antonio Felix da Costa putting in a 330.213. So that was about a second and a half off the hypercars. Now, FP3 was mainly a hyper pull practice, especially for, well, those in the hyper pole session. Uh, so you're probably going to see two different approaches throughout this session, which was the hyper pole approach and then the race practice approach for everyone who had already qualified. Uh, second was the United Auto Sports 22 at a 330.660. They were not in hyper pole, so they were just focusing entirely on the race, but still managed to clock it in P2. Third was the 23 United Auto Sports car at a 331.114 or 144. Um, Looking down to the P2 and division, you've got the IDEX Sport uh, number 17. Wait, was that the... Yeah, the IDEX Sport, uh, IDEX Sport number 17 is the fastest at a 332.347. Uh, so, what happened in LMP2 uh, in FP3? Well, the number 26 racing team Niederland car was behind the number 48 IDEX Sport car coming into the Molson corner. Now, the number 26 must have just misjudged how slow the 48 was going to come into Molson or decided he was going to take a look up the inside. I'm thinking the first one because who's going to be taking a look up the inside at Molson in practice? I'd assume that he just misjudged it, but uh, the number 26 ended up going up the inside of the 48 into Molson and basically punting the 48 off the track. Um, and that caused a bit of a schmazzle down at Molson. Now, everyone made it through cleanly other than, of course, the 26 and the 48, but... 
uh, there was quite a lot of cars off track and trying to stay out of the way of the incident. So that caused a bit of a disaster down at uh, Mulzahn. So looking down into the GTE categories, you've got fastest in GTE was the number 92 Porsche of Kevin Estra. He clocked in a 348.126. Second up was the WeatherTech Porsche of Earl Bamber with a 349.435. Uh, third was the number 91 Porsche. Richard Leitz clocked a 349.789. Um, yeah, so looking down into GTE AM, you have the Dempsey Proton, number 88 fastest with a 350.167. Uh, second in GTE AM was the Team Project 156, a 350.792, and four, or third was the number 77 Dempsey Proton uh, car with a 350.823. Now, GTE, uh, there wasn't a lot happening in FP3 for it being quite a chaotic session for the uh, prototypes. Uh, the only thing that happened was the number 63 Corvette backed it into the wall. The Porsche curves looked like he basically just missed the braking zone, probably locked up or something and just went straight on um, and spun and backed it into the wall. So it was a weird crash. It was a slow crash, but didn't look like there was any major damage. So they were probably able to fix that pretty quickly. So that's about all from uh, FP3. Let's go ahead and move on to Hyperpole. So, in Hyperpole, the fastest car taking the pole for the 2021 24 Hours of Le Mans, it's the number 7 Toyota. Uh, Kamui Kobayashi coming in clutch again with his fourth pole in the last five years, putting in a 323.9. Uh, second was his teammate Brendan Hartley coming off of, wait, nope, that was Kaz Nakajima, never mind, uh, the number 8 uh, Toyota clocked in a 324.195, so a front row lockout for the two Toyotas. Um, yeah, that'll be something to watch on Sunday, uh, seeing what they do with that. Obviously, a front row lockout is quite a bit of an advantage, uh, especially over uh, their competitor Alpine. Uh, the number 36 Alpine was third uh, with a 325.574. Fourth was the 708 Glickenhaus at a 325.639. And fifth was the number seven Glickenhaus at a 327.656. Again, two seconds off of the teammate Glickenhaus. The 709 just seems to be slower. I don't know what, if they're having issues of some kind, but it seems like they're not able to fix it if they're having issues and they're just... I mean, seemingly just slower than their teammate. Uh, it might have been that they had traffic, but I was watching the live stream that Motul has up of their onboard or whatever, and it didn't look like their fastest lap. It didn't look like there was a lot of lap traffic or something. So other than just having better warmed up tires or something on the 708 and maybe like draft down the moles on or something. I can't exactly see how the 709 would have been two seconds slower in no traffic. So yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, looking down into the P2 ranks. Sorry, I had a bit of an issue I needed to fix there. Looking into the LMP2 category, you've got the number 38 Jota Sport car. Antonio Felix de Costa clocking in a rapid fast 327.950. Second up, the number 41 Team WRT car, Louis Delatraz, clocking a 328.470. Half a second off of the fastest LMP2. So half a second gap between first and second. There's quite a bit. Uh... I mean, that'll put the Jota Sport car up in row three with the 709 Glickenhaus. So, yeah. Uh, looking into third place, you've got the number 26 G-Drive car. Nick DeVries putting in a 328.943. For the GTE category, you've got fastest is the number 72 Hub Auto Racing car of Dries Van Tour at a 346.882. Second up is the number 56 AF Corsa car, Daniel Serra putting in a 347.063. Third was the number 64 Corvette, Nick Tandy putting in a 347.093. Moving on to the GTE AM category, you've got uh, Dempsey Protons, number 88 with the fastest time, Julian and Lauer putting in a 347.987. Second up, the GR Racing number 86, uh, Benjamin Barger putting in a 348.560. And third, the number 5016 Project One car, Matteo Caroli putting in a 348.876. So um, 
In terms of stuff happening at Hyperpole, the main uh, thing was that the number 92 factory Porsche of Kevin Estra crashed at Indianapolis in a similar in a similar way that the number eight Toyota had crashed earlier in the session, just kind of looped it at the slower part of the corner and just backed it into the wall. It was an interesting thing to happen twice, but it's a fast corner with a weird braking zone. It's understandable, and I've done it like a thousand times in iRacing, so <laughs> yeah. So that was about all that happened in Hyperpole. Toyota on pole again. So finally, free practice four and final, I guess, the, well, not the final official practice, but the final normal practice of the week uh, before we get to uh, warm up on Saturday morning, which is just a short session. They'll do a couple laps and whatever. Uh, FP4, fastest in FP4 was the number eight Toyota, uh, Kaz Nakajima, putting in a 327.994. Second was the 36 Alpine. Uh, Nicola Lapierre putting in a 328.280. Uh, third was the number seven Toyota, uh, Kamui Kobayashi clocking in a 329.567. And fourth was the 709 Glickenhaus, Ryan Briscoe putting in a 330.309. Now, the number 708 Glickenhaus was actually quite far down the order. The fastest lap was a 336.178, and that put them in the mid to low ranks with the LMP2s. So, that's quite a weird thing that happened. They must not have... Let me check how many laps they run, because uh, they had only run eight laps, and the 709 had only run 13 laps, so it's interesting to see that Glickenhaus is not running near as many laps as Toyota and Alpine, because Toyota had gotten 27 for the 8 car and 28 for the 7 car, and uh, Alpine had gotten 23 in for their car. So interesting to see that Glickenhaus is not putting in as many practice laps as the big teams. Uh, so moving on to the LMP2 division, you've got fastest in the session was the G-Drive number 26 uh, with a 331.414. Second is the racing team Niederland number 29 uh, with a 331.862. And third was the number 22 United Auto Sports uh, Felipe Albuquerque putting in a 323. 332.006. Uh, GTE Pro, you have uh, the number 79 WeatherTech Porsche uh, with a 348.246. Second up was the number 91 uh, Factory Porsche at a 349.334. Uh, third was the number 63 uh, Corvette, uh, the 63 car up there actually, uh, instead of the 64, the 64 was right behind it. But the 63, uh, Antonio Garcia put in a 349.603. So uh, I've been talking yesterday about how the 63 is seeming to be slower than the 64. And that seems to have somewhat fixed itself. That they seem to be more even on pace now. The 64 was about a half a tenth behind. So yeah, good to see that the two uh, Corvettes are closing up in terms of pace and up there as well. Looking into GTE AM, uh, fastest of the session, you've got the number 83 AF Corsa uh, with a 351.561. Uh, second, the 71 Inception racing car with a 351.692. And third was the number 99 Proton uh, competition car with a 351.736. Now looking into GTE uh, you had the number 71 Inception Ferrari, driven by Ollie, Ollie Milroy, uh, who had crashed in the Ford chicanes. It looked like he just locked it up and spun it coming in through the first chicane and went straight into the wall of the car. It, it was a big crash, let's just say that. Um, yeah, that looks like something there. I mean, they'll obviously have time to repair it and they'll get it repaired, but it was quite a big crash and it ended up ending the session. The only other thing that happened that session in terms of crashes or incidents was the number seven Toyota, Kamui Kobayashi, uh, spinning at Tetra Rouge, coming out of the Tetra Rouge S's. He had gone a bit wide, hit the curb hard, and then that kind of kicked him off to the left and he ran to the grass for a minute. He spun out and uh, making good work of the runoff area in Tetra Rouge was able to keep the car under control and not hit anything. But it's interesting to see that both of the Toyotas had incidents today. And they're um, thus far the only hypercars to have a major incident. So I assume that's not anything major. It's probably just that they've had, they've had incidents. But 
both of them were their fault. It wasn't a, they got blocked by GT cars or an LMP2 did something weird. It was them that did something or something on the car. I don't know what happened with uh, Kaz Nakajima and FP3, but I assume that was just some type of driver error. But yeah, interesting to see that while Toyota is obviously the fastest right now, that they did have two incidents today throughout their two cars. So that's about all I have. Uh, there's nothing going on tomorrow in terms of, um, at least in terms of the World Endurance Championship. Uh, there's going to be other stuff going on at Le Mans. I'm not going to cover that. Most of the stuff I don't even know where to get the information from and don't know how to watch it. All that stuff. Uh, and IndyCar is at Gateway, but it's a one-day show, so I don't have anything to cover there. I was considering doing a starting grid, but I don't have enough time for that. So probably just not going to have anything tomorrow. Uh, that will leave a big day of coverage Saturday and Sunday. So I've got some stuff coming out for that. Uh, I'm trying to do a six-hour report, but that probably won't end up coming to fruition entirely just because sleep and stuff like that. Overrated. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah, that's about what I'm planning to do for the next couple of days. But uh, that's all for me for now. Uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. I'll see you all Friday. Bye.